I got a lot of really positive response from one of the last videos I did, the video with the tips for the heartbreak. I got actually quite a few emails from dozens of you from all around the world saying it was really helpful and asking me to do more videos like that. I like to provide content that's going to be useful to people. It's much better than me just coming up and making up something and thinking, oh, I think this is important, and then going out and blabbing about it and it's not really important. So I'd really give you guys, you know, it's great. I always appreciate the feedback because it allows me to help, better help me to better help you. It gives me a sense of what everybody wants to hear, what everybody wants to learn. I've also received a lot of really kind remarks from you guys who have bought my book, who have read it and everything. And, you know, it just means a lot to me. I'm still kind of in this, you know, not down to reality yet that it's, I actually have a book out and just to see it come to fruition. So anyways, about the book. Here am I holding it right now, and I want to give you guys a couple more heartbreak tips to work through, to pass on, to share with other friends and family, anybody you know who may be going through this. And when we're talking about broken heart too, a lot of times we think, initially we think relationships, those are the most obvious ones, right? Obviously the book was inspired by relationship heartbreak, but heartbreak's heartbreak. So this can be for you know death, it can be for a friendship that's broken up, it can be anything because the symptoms, the feelings of it, the sense of loss, it's still the same. So it definitely, uh, this book can be used to help a multitude of people in a multitude of situations. Having said that, the one thing I want to talk to you guys about today is creating a healing environment. I spent a lot of time in the book talking about creating a healing environment and the importance of it. Well, the tip I'd like to share with you is how important it is to do this is to get home and move the furniture around your house. Because the reason is, is we think we store memories in picture format, right? So we have associations of different things. Like if we see the ocean, we'll remember memories of the ocean. If we see, if we're eating a certain food, we can imagine eating a certain food with people. We think about your house or specifically like bedrooms or living rooms, areas that you and a significant other, a significant person may have spent the most time together, right? You're going to look at that couch and you remember the time that you guys watched your favorite movie together and cuddled up. You're going to look at that chair and you're going to remember the time that, you know, you guys sat over there and played Yahtzee or whatever it is. Yahtzee. Who plays Yahtzee anymore? Anyways, Yahtzee. Uh, so move the stuff around. Switch it up. And it doesn't seem like much because you still have the same chair and you still have the same couch. But just switching it around, it creates a new association in your brain because it doesn't look in the same. It doesn't look like it's in the same place. There's something a little different about it. Because when we recognize the chair over here, when we recognize the couch over here, and we have that memory of our ex or significant other there, it's also the whole setting that it's in, right? It's the entire setting. It's not just the chair, it's not just the couch, but it's that couch in that specific place. It's the chair in that specific place. So if you make these little switches like that, and you go and you start rearranging, rearranging, move the table to a different part, move your bed to a different station, you know, rearrange even things in the bathroom sink so you have your toothbrushes are on a different side. All those things. Sleep, in, sleep on the other side of the bed, whatever that is. You know, do those things and move it around. Because what you're doing is you're kind of helping your brain rewire itself. Because your brain isn't going to associate the same pictures to everything in this new area because it's going to look unfamiliar. Right? Familiarity is what it is what inspires memories, is what triggers memories to come up. But the unfamiliar, it's new territory, so we don't really have it. We can have frames of reference that we can look at and say, oh, this is kind of familiar like something else, but it's still going to be new. It may not make all the difference in the world, but it's going to make a small enough difference, right? And it's going to be baby steps. The littlest baby steps are going to one day lead to the biggest of leaps. Pretty soon, once you start doing those little baby steps, you're going to be moving up to a fast walk, and then you're going to be running and sprinting before you know it. So if you want to heal, if you want to move forward, if you want to take care of yourself, you have to be proactive in it. And one of the easiest and most effective ways to being proactive and helping you heal your broken heart is by moving around, changing your environment. I hope this helped. You know, please leave comments below. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, feedback is always great so I can help tailor these videos to what's going to be most beneficial to you. And yeah, I appreciate it. And I hope, again, I hope this really helps and makes a difference. Thank you.